Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here, videocopilot.net, and welcome to another 3D Max tutorial. And uh, hopefully uh, this technique will apply to other 3D programs as well. So if you use Cinema 4D or Blender or Maya, you know, this is the kind of stuff that should cross over. Now, recently, the Sci-Fi Network updated their graphics. Now, they used a GI system, uh, Global Illumination. I'm not sure exactly which one, but certainly you can tell by the way the shadows look. They're nice and soft. And I was thinking about a recent project that I had to do, and it really required a quick turnaround, and we weren't able to use Global Illumination because it just took too long to render and it would be flickery if we lowered the settings so we had to go with a different solution and what we did is an old school trick of setting up multiple lights in an array now I've fine-tuned it and we've set it up so that it's fairly easy but you can get some nice results like this so let's go and jump into 3d max and create this scene first we're gonna come to the shape tool and we're gonna click the text we're going to type uh, copilot and we have a cool font bold and then we're going to bring the size down a bit then we'll go to the add modifier and we'll choose bevel and we'll bevel it out a bit we'll zoom in and we'll turn on level 2 we'll set it to about 0.25 and negative 0.25 so that there's just a slight edge then we'll go create a box and bam and we'll move it down and just back it up so it's right behind the text we can zoom in here real quick let's set up the materials so I'll hit M brings up our materials and we'll go ahead pick a beige-ish color and we'll turn up the specular level and the glossiness and then we'll make a copy of the material by just dragging it over and we'll call this dark and we're gonna make this a bit darker and we're also gonna make it flat so we're gonna get rid of the specular drop that on the background this one goes on the text on the foreground might even make that just a little bit brighter so F9 got our text set up looking good Next, we're going to go to our standard lights. So any light should be able to do this. We're going to use an Omni, and we're going to stick it in the top right-hand corner, and we're going to bring it out just a bit. So this way the light's just coming from up here, and then we can go into the Modify, select the light, and turn on Shadows, and then use Area Shadows. And Area Shadows can sometimes take a while to render, but if you set it up right, it shouldn't be too bad. So we'll go into the area shadow parameters. We'll set it to 25 by 25. So it's as if the light is emitting from an object that's 25 by 25. And all this looks good. F9. So there we go. Nice shadow. Now here's where we want to position the light. In this case, we're going to move it closer so that we get a little bit of a longer shadow. Close that. Now the next thing we need to do is set up our lighting array. So first, I'll take our background and I'm going to freeze it. And also I'll take our text for that matter and we'll freeze it. And basically this is just a thing in Max that allows you to freeze things. And this way we're not accidentally selecting it. Next, we'll go to the Create Palette, Standard Lights, and we'll grab an Omni. And we want to put an Omni at the top here. And then we're going to hold down Shift and we're going to drag it down to the bottom and we're going to make an instance and that way if we change one of the lights all of the lights related to that instance will be the same so this way we can make a bunch of lights and only adjust one of them and they'll all follow so I'll choose OK and we'll control click the other light so now we have two lights and we'll rotate hold down shift and that clones it and we'll do two on the side like that instance OK then we'll do it again, instance, and one more time. So now we have a good array of lights. Now we have this light here, which I will also freeze. That's the light that has our area shadow. So now we have this uh, circle of lights. We'll move it forward so it's just in front, and then we'll hold down shift, 
and we'll move it forward again. So here we're making more instances of the light. And finally, we want to move one more and actually scale these down. And this way it's creating almost like a dome uh, sort of shape. Um, and uh, this looks good. Move this in. Now we do want to delete a couple of the lights just on this interior one so it's not too bright in the front. But we're just creating this basic, uh, you know, dome of lights, you know, nothing too fancy. Come back in here. Um, but first, actually, we'll select them all and we'll group them. So this is our array. And then we can go into the modify. And we'll set this to, say, 0.1. You know, really, really low because there's a lot of lights. We don't need it to be very high. Turn on shadows. Set it to shadow map, which is a really fast uh, shadow parameter. We'll come down to the shadow map parameters and we'll set the size to 400 and the sample range we can leave at 4. But we want to turn the density of the shadow to like 0 0.75 so it's not too dark. And that should be good. We'll see where we're at. So we'll hit F9. And that's good. You know, you can see the softness, but the light is just too bright. So we'll lower it down 0 0.05. Okay, so that's looking a lot better. Now the thing about this setup is we can move, so I'll go ahead and unfreeze everything. We can move this array of lights around. So we can push it back and maybe we want then to take it and turn it up to 0.75. And you can see everything looks nice and even. We might even just lower the shadow darkness of the array to maybe 0.65. And our render time is still three seconds, so that's very good. I'll go ahead and save our scene. Now, here's a really cool trick for affecting the specular highlight of the text. Now, I'm going to hit Control L to show default light so that we can see the scene a little bit better. What I want to do is go to the Create Light, click on the Omni, and I'm going to click up here just at the top. and I'm going to take that light, hold down shift, and drag it over. We're going to make an instance, and we're going to make, say, 20 copies, maybe 25. So we've created a row of lights, and they're all linked together. We can take that and group it, uh, highlight. And what I'm going to do is make it so that this light in the advanced effects only affects the specular. So I'm going to take the array and move it forward slightly. And then just make sure the multiplier is set to 1. Render that. You can start to see a nice specular highlight around the edges of the text. And if we move it forward just a little bit more, we should be able to get that edge to highlight. So that looks really good. I might even take our text and increase the bevel a bit. so that you can really see that highlight. So we'll take that, we'll move it back a bit, and then we'll duplicate it. Hold down shift and just drag one down here to the bottom. So now you can really start to see these uh, little highlights. And we may just want to move them in and out so that we can get them to hit right on those edges. So this is just a matter of finding where the angle is to the camera. Okay, so now you can see we have a very nice highlight around the edges. Now the other thing that we can do is make another copy and pull it out this way and move it down so that it's right in line with the text. And what's going to happen is it's basically going to reflect right off the text. So there it's kind of blown out. But if we move it down to just the right spot, It just kind of gives it a nice gloss and let's see right about there. 
and you know just makes it pop right off the, off the page there so that's a very cool technique and we're still getting really good render times it looks like about three seconds now finally just to uh, go over uh, the example that I showed you originally where the uh, letters sort of spin randomly um, so hit uh, shift L that will hide lights and what we're gonna do is take our text and first we're gonna copy it so hold down shift and just make a copy and then hide the copy and we'll take the text and we'll convert it to an editable poly and then we'll grab the element selection and we're just gonna select and come down here we let's see we'll make some more room here and we're gonna choose detach and select the next detach okay detach detach there's a script actually available um, that will do this for you but basically we need to make them all individual objects then we can select them all and if we click on the hierarchy choose effect pivot and center to object so uncheck that so now they're all selected we can animate really quick we'll turn on the animate auto key set a keyframe move forward to the beginning and then just randomly play around with this so just uh, I'm going to rotate it who knows and then it will just sort of come in look kind of cool so if we look at this now what's cool is there's so much specularity highlights coming in that we're gonna see some really cool uh, you know gloss on some of these edges and you know this is a very fast setup and you can see we get some very nice uh, results let's go ahead and save that um, and setting up the lights that way really make the materials look nice without having to use uh, reflection now another thing you may experiment with is the light tracer um, so if we go ahead hide these lights or uh, just kind of shut them off we're just going to leave on the one uh, area shadow light. So if you just set your scene up with that one light and add also in a skylight, set the color, you know, dim it out just a little bit because it'll come in pretty bright to maybe 0.5 or so. And right now you don't want to render it, but if you go into the light tracer, that turns on that special rendering plugin and then render it out. And you can see a nice soft shadow look. And if we turn that up, perhaps maybe 0.75. So looks really nice we are getting to the eight nine second render time um, and we still have to uh, work a few things out so it is very nice very smooth a lot easier to set up but it's still two to three times slower to render um, something very important to think about especially if you're doing something you know with animation where uh, you know maybe flickering might be a problem although I don't think light tracer flickers in the same way that a uh, global illumination does so at least you won't have that same problem. But anyway, these are two cool methods that uh, you can use, and uh, I hope you guys found this useful. My name is Andrew Kramer for videocopilot.net, and we'll see you next time.